It's time! Episode 4, ladies and gentlemen, of the ATM, the Apologise to Me podcast. My name is Martin Devlin, I work for The Platform, and with me is Mark Watson. Watto, as always, topics to talk about, including where for art thou future, Ian Foster, to foz or not to foz. I also want to discuss the comments by Graham Soonis, where he has been castigated by Sky Sports UK about oh. saying it's a man's game while he was watching two teams of men playing football. And then speaking of football, of course, we will get into the fact that your capitulation has meant Man City already own that title. Apologise to me! But as always... You are a, you are a nasty, nasty, nasty yeah, man. Hang on a second. Just hold, yes. Well, we've got Mark Robinson on the line, so I need Mark to Robinson? Yeah, yeah. Now. Yeah. But right you, now. Should, so so, second, so what do I do, mate? Well, I oh, I'll you carry it. Yeah, we'll just carry well, carry it. Well, I'll carry it. Okay, well, no, this no, is the apologise to me. Okay, so we're going to have Mark Robertson on the show, the CEO of New Zealand Rugby. Okay, so we've got Mark Robertson on the show. Okay, well, Mark, lovely, lovely to have you on. I imagine it's a difficult time. F first question I've got for you, though, do you have confidence in Ian Foster? Well, Mark, um, as I said, um, when I fronted the media in South Africa, um, that those decisions will be made in time when those decisions will be made. Is Ian Foster the next all-black coach? Look, really, uh, at the moment, um, that is a decision that will be made um, by the board when the board makes that decision and it will be communicated at that time when that decision is made. Uh, all I can tell you at the moment is that we're all working very hard uh, behind the scenes. Um, we're spending an awful lot of time considering everything that we have uh, to do with this issue, and that um, in time you will get the same answer uh, that everyone uh, else uh, will okay, get. Okay, Mark, but do you see Ian Foster taking this all-black team through to the next Rugby World Cup? Well, I'd like to coach a f quote a former all-black coach, John Mitchell. Um, that's a very good question. The coach at the next World Cup for the all-blacks will be the person that the board endorses as the coach, yes. C can I just say, you're sounding a lot like a guy I work with. That he's a little irrational guy, Martin Devlin. I, I don't know if, you've, if anybody's ever told you that. Look, j just sticking with the rugby theme, um, who holds the Ranfurly Shield? The, sorry? The... Mark Robinson is my guest on the program, the CEO of New Zealand Rugby. Sorry, who the, holds the Ranfurly Shield? The, is it, this isn't a... This is obviously a trick question, but look, I, would, I, will, I will defer and refer that to the board, and the board will be able to provide that answer in time. Uh, might it, uh, the Bunnings NPC this week. Uh, what game are you looking forward to, Mark? Is it is it called the Bunnings NPC this week? Is it? I thought it was that. I, again, I mean, I, I've just come back from South. Have what is okay? Well, but, but, it used to be the ITM Cup. Mark. But perhaps we could comment on something. I mean, I, I've actually look. I was you know being personally responsible for killing both those facets of New Zealand rugby because no one really wants to know anything about the grassroots, even though on Sky we do promote it as the soul of New Zealand rugby. Okay, the, well, let's talk about. St. Kennegan's College. Ah, oh, Fast 15 Rugby! That is the future! There is nothing better than getting young 15-year-olds, putting them on the TV, making them into superstars, blowing smoke up their backsides, then five years later, they're the most fanny bunch of all blacks that we've ever seen. But hey, it gets Instagram likes. <laughs> oh, well, Mark Robertson, oh, mate, it's I'll been an you, absolute privilege Look, and a pleasure. And, and honestly, here we are, extracting the Michael and taking the piddle out of this, but everything that I just said in that answer, honestly, it's exactly what you're getting. exactly what we're getting. What's the line that Ardern always rolls out when she gets a difficult question? I refute that question. No, see, I'd like to push back. I'd like to push back on that. So here we are, Mark Watson with us. So this is the ATM uh, Apologise to Me podcast. Ian Foster. Now, you have to eat some humble pie here, and I'm going to make you a slice, and you're going to chew it, pal, because out of all the biff that you've delivered in his direction, it's about time you actually took some of yourself. You and the rest of the New Zealand public had no faith in my man, Foz. Eat it! I gave him a 5% chance last week. You gave him a 1% chance, my good man. You right. did. Hey, on, well let's, done. Let's well done out. to let's, the let's All Blacks. Edit that out South there, Africa. I don't, I don't want to... Did I really give him a 1%? I gave him a 99% chance, Wano, from what well, I look, remember. Look, South Africa, South Africa... Hey, sorry, man. Can we just start this whole thing again? I'm not happy. You shouldn't be happy, and the reason you shouldn't be happy is because you dogged the coach when in actual fact you didn't give him enough time. 
And it's about time that you actually realise that sometimes you are wrong. And this is one of those times no, that you're wrong. No. And I'm not going to edit this, and I'm not going to no. rewind okay, the tape okay, on this. Okay, okay, well, let, let me have my say. Stop shouting. Stop shouting. Just calm down. Three deep breaths. Three deep breaths. Good point. Close your eyes. Okay, we you both sound see like psychologists. Right. That's it. Tied in. Okay, tied, tied, out, tied, in tied, tied out. Tied in. Tied out. Okay, three deep okay. breaths, Martin. Three deep breaths. Look, unfortunately for Ian Foster, there's still not enough confidence in this guy to take this all-black team forward. If we were to play South Africa again next week, you know how woeful they were on the weekend. Do you expect us to beat them? Are you still confident that we're going to beat Argentina? Are you still confident that we're going to beat Australia? Are you still confident that we're going to win at the end of the year? And if... They keep Ian Foster in, and then we drop another test. Can you imagine the vitriol targeted towards the board? And let's be honest, the board, it's all about looking after the board's oh, reputation. Know, they know. will run for cover. Yeah, they will. Uh, it was, look, it was a much improved All Black performance. Um, am hey, I convinced? Can I just, no, I'm not convinced. Okay, I just want to interrupt you there. Yes, it was a much improved All Black performance, but let us not make excuses about South Africa and say that they played badly because the previous week, exactly the opposite happened. What happened this time is the All Blacks selected right. They got a front row that's not ball playing mobile props. They got a front row that can actually scrum and can actually do the work that they're employed to do. Plus, also, we had a referee that didn't let them sit down every five minutes and rest. And as pedantic as he was, and as officious as he was, and I was yelling at him thinking, your shorts are too oh, tight. Oh, you woke mate. up and watched it, did you, oh, you Martin? Yes, I did. Your shorts. Dude, I, did oh, absolutely. I did it. I did it. Of course I did, mate. Your shorts are too tight. The fact is, we ran them off their feet. And in the last few minutes there, Watto, down to 14 men, they couldn't actually keep up with this. They couldn't keep up with the recycling of the ball. They were gassed, mate. Yeah. And that is the way to beat those big fatties, is to gas them. Hey, when you woke up, when you woke up, did you have your Warriors jersey on and did you have your pom-poms on doing a little chant for the Barrett brothers? I don't live on planet Cameron, mate. I live on planet Earth. And no, I didn't. I watched that game thinking that this is the end of Ian Foster's coaching regime. Well, it is and still that, the end of Ian Foster's it, it coaching be, regime. Look, it can't it, be It now. has How to be. It, be. it has to the be. The guy, before he boarded the plane... To come back to New Zealand, defiantly said, "I am still the coach," and I and I back him on doing that. I, if Mark Robinson is going to sack this guy, then Mark Robinson, you have to do it publicly. You're going to have to spend millions of New Zealand rugby's precious money doing it. And in that case, you failed as a CEO, and you need to fall on your sword. Can I ask you a question? Will we win the Rugby World Cup under Ian Foster? My answer to that is the same as it's always been. I don't believe still this group of players is actually good enough to win the Rugby and World Cup. No matter who this group coaching, of players? Who's coaching them? Okay, well, pick another squad. Who's out there, mate? There isn't anyone else. Of course there is. Who? Mark Robert, uh, 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 Tom Robinson. Um, Kurt Eklund. There's a lot of players that should be given an opportunity here that have not Maybe been Maybe they will picked. against Argentina because this squad was only due for those two tests in Africa. And I think that there will be players that will be dropped. There are players that didn't play in that second oh, test who won't come back now. Look, oh, you've God. got two choices here. You should get a job with Sky Television, mate. You're starting to sound like a PR firm well, for Ian Foster in New Zealand rugby. Well, the reason that I get a job with Sky Television is because I'm sitting in front of you. I'm a man. I am white. I have a penis. And I have an opinion. And that means as far as Sky Television in New Zealand goes, there's no way that you can work on that on that forum and medium, even though their audience of, of people who buy Sky Sports subscriptions is what? It's white guys like me who like sport. I can tell you right now that Sky Sports audience is not 20 to 25 year old woke feminist screamers on social media. And it never has been. So, so why the you hell would they not try get a cater? job then at Sky TV in the I UK won't. or the BBC? No, I wouldn't. Apologise to me. And let's actually go on to another topic. That's exactly what I'm, I'm segueing to the Graham Singer situation. Could, could, could you see the segue there? It was just beautiful, mate. I'll tell you what, it was, it was like a Martin, Martin robinson It was a Martin Crow cover drive, mate. It was effortless. It was on the front foot. The head was down. What but someone was just a little bit too slow to pick up on it. What a beauty. Well, that, I tell you what, I don't care whether or not you think a supermodel walking a catwalk is the most gorgeous thing you've seen in your life. I would argue that a Martin Crow cover drive and a Greg Chappell cover drive on the toes, Watto, full, full face of the bat, down the ground, back past the bowler for four. You're getting me emotional, mate. Well, I'm getting worse than emotional. You're getting me to, emotional. I'm starting to get to a stage can, can where we, can we you and me can and Caden Ponga might go into a toilet together and be sick together. God, what is it with the NRL and these Muppets every week? Every week. These clowns every are in week. the media. Every They've week. got so many people telling them to behave themselves that you represent the NRL. You've got story care, after care, story after care. story. And then these guys. You've got concussions. Oh, let's go out and get booze. So, uh, uh, I mean, are, seriously, okay, mate. Now, wait, are they the Newcastle Knights or are they the Warriors? Let's talk about his father, Andre Ponga, who's come out here and just oh, done... Oh, sorry, just on that. I went to a Warriors function once, and I knew it was a Warriors function, okay, because they had energy drinks and sleeping pills <laughs> as the main course, mate. 
I went back to a hotel with four others and we got up to no good. Look, and Caelan Pong, his father's come out uh, overnight. And, you know, dear old Andre, and I respect the fact he's a father and he wants to protect his kid and that, but you've just done the worst thing possible, mate. There's only two reasons that two men go into a toilet together. That's either having a grinder date or they're taking drugs, right? And so what Andre's come out and he said, oh, no, he was celebrating a big house purchase and he was sick and his mate went in there to help him. Andre, dude, we don't live on planet Cameron. We all know what actually went on. So there are two things that happened. If they weren't in love and they weren't having an encounter... He'd go, in well, the, in, he'd go well in the Labour caucus, wouldn't he? But if they're not having an encounter in the toilet, we know what they are doing. You're best to shut up, mate, and not say anything about it because you're actually making it worse mm. and you're highlighting the fact of what they were actually doing. But let's go back to Graham Sooners. If you don't know the story, ladies and gentlemen, what it is is Chelsea played Tottenham Monday morning New Zealand time, a real ding-dong, good battle of biffo on the football pitch at Stamford Bridge there. It ended with yelling, screaming, the crowd going berserk, two managers not wanting to know each other, two managers shaking hands like perhaps Mark Robinson might with Ian Foster. Okay. And What you see, he's not going to look him in the eye. And Graham Soonis turns around and said, it's a man's game, that's what we want, we want more physicality. There happened to be a woman sitting next to him in the commentary panel, and so Sky Sport UK have now made him come out and apologise for that. Here's my question for you, mate. When two teams of men play sport, what are you meant to say? It's a, it's a them game. Yeah, no, it's an androgynous no, no, game. I mean, no, no, no. Look, stop this rubbish no, now. Stop, stop politicising everything. That's the thing that annoys me. Stop politicising it. Graham Soonis didn't say it in a way which, you know, it wasn't, hey, about putting women down. No, he was just using the correct male basically... adjectives to describe this job. And when are people actually going to realise that men and women are different too? I, I listen to a guy, Jordan Peterson, a lot, a professor out of Toronto. And, and, it's, and one of the big things that people have got to remember, men and and women are different. And so he gives a really good example. He says, you go to these egalitarian... You mean so biologically different, Mark? Really? He says, Are we really? But, but you go to these egalitarian uh, countries where they've got had, you know, equality a lot longer than anybody else. In Scandinavia, for every one female nurse, uh, for every one male nurse, there will still be 20 female nurses. For every one female engineer, there will still be 20 male engineers. That's because people, this? women like things... Uh, women like people, men like things. They are different. And so when you get a game mate. with a lot more physicality, anymore. and it is a throwback to the good old days, why cannot you use that adjective to describe it? Well, I find myself in Tokyo, this is how bad it's got. So I'm at the Olympic Games last year, and I'm doing the canoe slalom, the whitewater kayaking, one of the coolest sports Great you sport. can do. Great when sport. you're there, the water's just the most amazing colours. It's hot. And I'm and the women are into it, and I'm just saying, hey, this is just such a sexy sport. And I didn't mean it. In no, no, any no. other way yep. than this is just a cool sport. And in that split moment, I'm like, oh, oh my, God. my God. So I'm suddenly Googling to see what the definition is. Unfortunately, there was a definition. Well, the definition actually was the way I used it to say it's cool, it's, yeah. it, it, it's very endearing. Yeah, of course. But, you know, immediately... The moment the men start, I'm having to use the phrase again, so I just cover myself <laughs> so that the 1% out there don't end my oh, career. Man. Now, the biggest problem is, and the other thing is, you look at this, we are just constantly being inundated by no, the we have to, University, though, no, now. No, we've got to push back and we've got to fight back, and it's really important that everyone who gets offended at this stuff, like this ridiculousness around Graham Sooners, actually has a voice and says it. Stop telling us and reinventing yep. language. That's you, right. The, this, you squealing, screaming, hysterical bunch of social media morons who, let's be honest, Mark, a thousand, a thousand comments on Facebook doesn't mean a thing. No. It doesn't. It means that half a billion people on the planet don't give a stuff about no. it. Translate it that way. Well, yeah, but Martin, I mean, it starts at the universities, doesn't it? University is no longer a place to have an opinion. It's a safe haven for those that don't want to be offended. The humanities, the social science, all been inundated by the left. Now, they'll tell you what's offensive. i tell you what I find offensive. Every European person I know that is successful, they labelled as privileged. And then they use the word white privilege. Well, I find that offensive, but apparently that's okay on the left. That's not offensive because they determine hey, but what's those offensive. Those are white privileged people but, at university telling us that. But but the other thing is, I hate the word reverse racism because it implies there's only one group of people that are racist. My point being is. Where do we draw the line in terms of what is offensive? Why does everything need to get politicised? Why do careers need to be ripped apart because a guy in the heat of the moment uses a word with no with no negative intent whatsoever? Well, there are two things. Suddenly here. jumps on no, that little two, bandwagon okay, and says, things. "Hang on a minute! How things. dare you make this masculine?" No, no, there are two things here, um, and and the gun should be pointed at whoever the executive is at Sky Sport UK 
who was the person who decided that he had to apologise. Because that person Sorry, is... Sorry, Sky Sport UK or New Zealand? No, UK, because Graham okay. Stern is right. Just checking. So, so this, Just checking so this, is where, this is where the gun should be pointed, and that person should be made to resign. If any punishment is dished out, it should be to that person. But when you're talking about football, when you're talking about euphoria, when you're talking about emotion, when you're talking about love, when you're talking about hate, you see, I might hate my football team to the end of the earth. I might want that whole club to burn down. I like the annihilation going on at the that moment. And I would like to shoot said, both Martin. glazers and I would like to kill half the squad. But then again, when I see Wilfred Zaha carving up Liverpool at Anfield and Crystal Palace taking a precious point and knowing that after two games, the title race is over, all of a sudden, do I love football? I love football, mate. I love football because your misery is my love. That's what it is. And we might be getting dick 4 0 by Brentford, but your one all draw with Palace hurts you more because you know the title's gone. That's where I live in a normal world. Can we get a doctor in here? Can we get a doctor <laughs> so in here? I, hey, 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 Martin, Martin. I don't care if my team wins. I just want no, your team no, to no, cock no, up, oh, mate. Oh, I'm speechless. First time in my life I'm speechless, Martin. You've owned me, mate. You've owned me. Oh, yeah, it rips my heart out, mate. It rips my heart out. Um, yeah, I'm. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah. The Barrett brothers. Let's go back to the Barrett brothers. Devlin. Oh, how does he do that? How does he do that? The platform.